so I thought I would uh, speak today about one illustration of that. And this has to do with the, the famous issue of the origin of the soul. <laughs> uh, so just to illustrate what happens when you meddle with the, the presentation that Srila Prabhupada made of this philosophy. So it is said that the, uh, in Vedic literature, that the conditioned souls are nitya bada, which means eternally conditioned. Uh, nitya means forever or eternal and so on. The word anadi is also used, which is beginningless. So the question can be raised of what does it mean to say that the uh, spirit soul is conditioned uh, eternally or without beginning. So one way to look at that, which I've been hearing about recently, is that, well, actually, uh, beginningless means that literally there was never a time when the spirit soul was not conditioned and within the material nature. Spirit soul has always been within the material nature. There was no beginning to this. So however far back you go, that's where the conditioned soul was. Uh, and that's it. So uh, that's one way to look at it. Srila Prabhupada said something a bit different. Uh, this is one statement that Srila Prabhupada made. Uh, Since no one can trace the history of the living entity's entanglement in material energy, the Lord says that it is beginningless. By beginningless, it is meant that the conditioned life exists prior to the creation. It is simply manifested during and after the creation. So this statement is made. So here, beginningless is taken to mean uh, two things. You can't trace out the beginning of the spirit soul's entanglement in the material energy. And it dates back to before the creation. Well, those two things sort of go together because certainly if something dates back to before the creation, then you're not going to be able to trace it out. So those two things are consistent. Now, this idea makes sense in terms of the Vedic conceptions of time. Because, in fact, time in the Vedic literature does not consist of one infinite timeline. But it consists of many separate chunks of time. Uh, each one is marked in the beginning by a creation of a universe and it's ended by an annihilation of that universe. So when the universes aren't manifest, you have a situation in which material time is not active. We have many descriptions in the Bhagavatam of the creation of the universe. The first stage of creation is that Mahavishnu glances over Pradhan, and he introduces the time factor, or he enters, enters into it as the time factor. Uh, Krishna says that I am time in the Bhagavad Gita. So the time factor is the activating agency which sets the modes of material nature into uh, action. Uh, in the Pradhan state, the modes of material nature are not active and nothing is happening. So their time is suspended. So Krishna or Mahavishnu enters as time and things begin to happen. Uh, so then the elements are created, one after another, and then the universal globe is formed, and then Vishnu enters into the universal globe as Garbhadakshai Vishnu. Brahma is produced from his navel. From Brahma, different generations of beings are uh, produced. And this goes on for uh, a long period of time, but finally there comes the annihilation. Uh, Brahma dies. Uh, the elements are absorbed back into one another and finally into the primordial state of Pradhan and everything goes into the body of Mahavishnu. And that's the end of the, of that material manifestation. Then later, uh, later in spiritual eternal time, Mahavishnu will again create. So this goes on, uh, eternally, but you don't have unbroken eternal material time. Material time exists when universes are manifest, and then it ceases to exist when universes are annihilated. So the very idea 
that the soul has been eternally in the material nature in the sense of uh, existing on a timeline that goes back forever, uh, that doesn't even fit in with the whole description of the uh, creation of the universes in the Vedic literature. So that's one point, that what Srila Prabhupada is saying here actually makes sense in terms of uh, saying what it means to be beginningless. Now, another aspect has to do with the whole uh, meaning of the spirit soul's existence. Uh, if you say that the spirit soul, let us say, has without beginning been within the material energy, then practically you're saying that the spirit soul is material in the sense that it may, uh, formally speaking, be spiritual, but it has never acted spiritually. It has always acted materially in the context of materially, material uh, conditioning. There has never been anything else in the experience of that soul. So, in effect, it, the soul becomes material. Uh, it's only formally spiritual. And then one has to think that something that for eternity, without a beginning, has been existing in materially conditioned consciousness, now today is going to become liberated from that and is going to enter into spiritual consciousness for the first time ever. And that becomes a little bit un, un, not plausible. How is it that something that has eternally been conditioned materially is now going to suddenly do something totally different? It's going to enter into a spiritual state. So uh, Srila Prabhupada has given a different account of uh, what happens with the spirit soul. And what I would argue is that this makes sense, whereas the idea of the soul eternally in the materially conditioned state and then becoming liberated doesn't really make sense. So what Srila Prabhupada says is that the spirit soul by nature is uh, existing in the spiritual world. And by misuse of independence, the spirit soul enters into the material state of existence. And then by proper use of independence, the spirit soul can go back to the spiritual state. So according to this idea, the soul can exist in one state or the other, spiritual or material. Uh, the soul is capable of switching back and forth between the two. Uh, its power to do this is called independence. Uh, this independence is a natural feature of the soul because the soul is part and parcel of Krishna. Krishna by nature is independent, so the soul being part and parcel of Krishna should have a minute degree of independence. Uh, so independence means the power to do things rightly or wrongly. Uh, one has the power to decide. And if a soul misuses that power, then the soul comes in contact with material nature. Otherwise, the soul is in the spiritual situation. Now, this makes it very plausible that the spirit soul could go back to Godhead, which, by the way, is an interesting phrase, because how can you go back to a place where you've never been? One would have to say that that phrase is meaningless if, in fact, you've never been there, uh, from a grammatical point of view. So uh, uh, some it's good to read this in Srila Prabhupada's own words. There are a few statements here. Uh, for example, uh, the living entity exists in the natural state of Krishna consciousness, but he has marginal independence, and this allows him to forget Krishna. Originally, pure Krishna consciousness exists, but because of misuse of marginal independence, there is a chance of forgetting Krishna. So that is stated. In another place, uh, Srila Prabhupada said, uh, arguments may be put forward, as to why we have been put under the influence of this material energy by the supreme will of the Lord. This is explained in Bhagavad Gita, where the Lord says, I am sitting in everyone's heart, and due to me one is forgetful or one is alive in knowledge. The forgetfulness of the conditioned soul is also due to the direction of the supreme Lord. A living entity misuses his little independence when he wants to lord it over material nature. This misuse of independence, which is called maya, is always available. Otherwise, there would be no independence. 
Independence applies, implies that one can use it properly or improperly. It is not static, it is dynamic. Therefore, misuse of independence is the cause of being influenced by maya. So here you have an explanation of a cause, cause and effect. Why are you influenced by maya? Well, it's due to misuse of your independence. According to the idea that you've eternally been in the material world, if you say, why are you under the influence of maya? Well, there's no answer to that question because you've always been under the influence of maya. So there's no question of that being caused because it's always been, been there. Uh, here's another one. Uh, the spirit soul, the living entity, has no death, for he is eternal and inexhaustible. Being free from material contamination, he can go anywhere in the material or spiritual worlds. He is fully aware and completely different from the material body. But because of being misled by misuse of his slight independence, he is obliged to accept subtle and gross bodies created by the material energy and thus be subjected to so-called material happiness and distress. So this makes an interesting point. The soul by nature is fully aware. So you can say, well, if the soul is fully aware, why would the soul do something foolish? Well, independence is there. So even if you're fully aware, you can uh, misuse your independence. Uh, then again, the conditioned state is caused by the misuse of the individual independence of the spiritual platform. For this separates the living entity from the association of the spiritual energy. So that, if that means there's separation. The soul must be connected with the spiritual energy, and then due to this misuse of independence, there is a separation. Uh, now, there's an interesting point about the question of whether or not uh, a spirit soul in the, in the spiritual world could come to the material world. Uh, there's a conversation in which Srila Prabhupada made a very clear point about that. Uh, a devotee named Bhakti Jana asked, uh, when the souls that were never conditioned at all, do they also have the independence? He asked. Prabhupada said, yes, but they have not misused. Uh, they know that I am meant for Krishna's service and they are happy in Krishna's service. So Bhakti Jana, could they ever misuse it? Prabhupada, yes, they can misuse it also. That power is there. Devotees, well, I believe you once said that once a conditioned soul becomes perfected and gets out of the material world and he goes to Krishna Loka, there's no possibility of falling back. Prabhupada, no, there is possibility, but he does not come. Just after putting your hand in the fire, you never put it again if you are really intelligent. So those who are going back to Godhead, they become intelligent. So he's saying that even if you go back to Godhead, there's possibility because you still have that independence. But uh, it's just like someone putting his hand in the fire. If you're intelligent, you're not going to do that again. And apparently you don't get to go back to Godhead unless you become intelligent. <laughs> Presumably those who go back are intelligent. <laughs> So, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Well, here's another. This is a, uh, a verse in Bhagavatam. Uh, the Brahmana continued, My dear friend, even though you cannot immediately recognize me, this is from the allegory of uh, King Paranjana, even though you cannot immediately recognize me, can't you remember that in the past you had a very intimate friend? Unfortunately, you gave up my company and accepted a position as enjoyer of this material world. So the dear friend is uh, Krishna here. So he's saying, you gave up my company and accepted a position as enjoyer of this material world. So in the uh, that's in the Bhagavatam. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada said, the natural position of the living entity is to serve the Lord in a transcendental loving attitude. When the living entity wants to become Krishna himself or imitate Krishna, he falls down into the material world. Or again he says, by misusing his independence, the living entity falls down from the service of the Lord and takes a position in this material world as an enjoyer. That is to say, the living entity takes his position within a material body. So you have the definite idea of a process 
which uh, results in one's coming to the material world. Uh, let's see, one more. This is the one regarding taking a life as Brahma. Uh, it stated, both the Lord and the living entity, being qualitatively spirit soul, have the tendency for peaceful enjoyment. But when the part of the Supreme Personality of Godhead unfortunately wants to enjoy independently without Krishna, he is put into the material world where he begins his life as Brahma and is gradually degraded to the status of an ant or a worm in stool. So that's, uh, that is stated. Oh, this is um, in the ninth canto, chapter 24, text 58. So...